everyone. Welcome to our May 2022 Ask Tom Database Security Office Hours. My name is Richard Evans, and I'm joined by Nausea, our product manager for AutoVault and Database Firewall. She's going to have our technical session today. Just a little bit of housekeeping here. These calls are being recorded. Uh, we're not going to record the question and answer session at the end, but we are going to record the announcements and the presentation. And we'll have those posted in a few days at the asktom.oracle.com website. Uh, I've got a bit.ly link here that I'll share in the chat with you so you can see that. But where you registered for this event is where you can go find the recordings. We've got over two years there now, maybe closer to three years worth of Ask Tom recordings out there. So if there's a subject or a topic you're interested in, check out those recordings because there's a lot of good information out there that we've done Audit Vault, Transparent Data Encryption, Database Vault, Database Security Assessment Tool, Data Masking, lots of really good things we've done out there. Okay? So if this is your first time joining us, thank you for joining us. This is a, a, a Database Security Office Hours where we give you the opportunity to interact with Database Security Product Management and Product Development here. So we're always going to have some relevant announcements on what's going on with Database Security at Oracle. Uh, we're going to have a technical or some kind of a presentation on a security topic. And then we'll have some questions at the end. So you don't have to limit your questions to just today's topic. If you have other questions, you can ask us about those. If you're not comfortable asking questions, we'll provide our emails and you can send us an email and ask us offline. Okay. So one of the things that we're going to ask you to do is put those questions in the Q&A panel. That way we can keep track of them and make sure that we can get to them here at the end of the session. And uh, again, if, you, if you're if you not comfortable, I'll provide my email and you can send me a, a, a message offline and say, hey, Rich, I've got this question. It's real specific to our environment and we'll try to answer them for you, okay? All right, this month's announcements, the April uh, release update was released on the 19th of April. So please make sure you're keeping up to date on these patches. They contain bug fixes, security updates, maybe a, a, a updated feature here or there, but it's really important that you stay on top of these quarterly patches. I always like to say that, you know, attackers, hackers are inherently lazy. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna look at what's out there and they're gonna reverse engineer it and say, oh, okay, that's an exploit. That's something I can do. And then you're going to start to see these being taken advantage of. It does. It applies to any product vendor out there. Once a patch gets released, they start to see an uptick in the uh, attacks on those uh, security fixes that they implemented. So please, please, please take a look at oracle.com forward slash security dash alerts and keep up to date on these quarterly patches. Relevant support notes today, uh, Nazi and her team have done a great job at looking at the documentation and keeping the ABDF documentation up to date. There's things we miss. So please, if you see a typo, if something doesn't quite make sense or doesn't answer your question, submit a doc bug, send us an email, let us know that there's something there. Because we've looked at these, document, these documents a, a thousand times and it kind of just becomes a blur at that point, right? Where there's been a typo in a little infographic on the database vault documentation for years, all of us have looked at it and we just didn't even notice it, you know? So somebody pointed it out and it's like, oh man, I can't believe we missed that, but we missed things. So please take a look at the documentation, bookmark those, keep, keep us uh, updated if you notice anything not right. Nazi also wants you to look at the My Oracle Support Sizing Advisory for ABDF. So that's gonna be note, 20926831 and I'll paste these into the chat here in a minute. But just take a look at that when you're sizing your Audible database firewall environment. Gives you a lot of good information there. We also have a blog. So we've got a database security blog over at blogs.oracle.com forward slash cloud security. And these are some of our, our most recent blogs that we've put out there. I published one on getting your database security into shape. Just, hey, take a look at what you're doing today. What do we want to accomplish for the second half of the year? Or if we're going into a new fiscal period, what could we look at and say, all right, here's where we're at on database security. Here's what DBSAT tells us. Here's what DataSafe tells us. Here's the things we'd like to implement. 
and just kind of put a plan together to do some of that stuff. World Password Day was a few days ago. There's a blog on that. Uh, transitioning securely to cloud. Nausea has got her blog on Audit Vault and Database Firewall, this 20.7 release that she's going to talk about today. And then Alan Williams has a really good blog post out there on autonomous database integrating with OCI IAM. And we've done a Ask Tom session on that two or three months ago, I think, maybe February or something. So yeah, there's good blogs out there. I'll paste the links to those in the chat so you can take a look at them. And then finally, Cloud World, right? It used to be uh, Oracle Open World. It's now Oracle Cloud World. It used to be in San Francisco. Now it's in Las Vegas. So if you haven't started planning, take a look at Oracle Cloud World. Uh, several of us from database security product management and a lot of folks from database product management will be there. So you can see our presentations, you get to interact with us, you get to ask questions, you know, you get to work with your, uh, interact with your peers in the industry. So mark your calendar for October 16th through 20th in Las Vegas. It looks like it's gonna be at two locations, the, uh, the Venetian Resort and then Caesars Forum as well. So it'll be exciting. It'll be the inaugural Cloud World event for us. Um, we've done other events, but we haven't done an in-person event in, what, three years now, maybe since 2019. So it's been a while. So we're looking forward to getting back and seeing customers and, you know, seeing our, our friends in the industry. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and kick over to this technical topic. I'll turn it over to Nazia. Okay. Thank you, Rich, for sharing it and sharing all the details um, about the sizing, about the blog. Um, on the blog, I just want to include that uh, since we release uh, uh, release update uh, quarterly or, or whenever that there is a new release update, um, I write one blog to all of you. This is one of my way of telling all the customers and partners there is a new release for AVDF is available and what are new feature highlighted feature of in that particular release. So usually I send out uh, a blog link to my to customers whosever email ID I have because I run AVDF cafe also quarterly um, separate session on AVDF. So, uh, but uh, if, if there is other way you want us to let you know about new blog, let us know. We will we will try to publish that information. Okay, so today's agenda is very uh, very straightforward, simple. Uh, first, I will talk about top five use cases of Audit Vault database firewall. Uh, there might be uh, uh, many of you or few of you already know AVDF, uh, but I just want to highlight those five top use cases. I'm not sure if you are using all those uh, five use cases uh, in AVDF or or. You know, you are using some of them. You want to try those other uh, use cases as well. Um, then I'll talk about what's new in 20.7. 20.7 uh, is is a feature packed uh, release update. Actually, there are a lot of uh, good feature in that particular um, release. So I will highlight those. And uh, one of the major feature uh, that our Oracle database customers had been asking uh, that ability to to monitor uh, TLS encrypted traffic okay uh, a lot of Oracle database customer they either use a native uh, network encryption any or uh, or TLS we used to support any uh, but now uh, we have seen a lot of demand for TLS uh, for Oracle database customers and uh, that's the that's one of the major feature we we release I'll talk about a little bit more on that and then final call to action. Okay, so what are those top five uh, AVDF use cases? I would really like you to look at it. Uh, but before we go there, uh, uh, what are the problem statements or, or what are the problems that we are trying to solve with database activity monitoring solution or AVDF uh, 
solution is that uh, one question you need to ask yourself when you are deploying or implementing a VDF is that, do you have a visibility that what exactly your privileged users and DBAs are doing uh, on your system? Do you have 100% visibility of your privileged users because they are, they are users with ele elevated privileges, a lot of access. So it's very important to have a good visibility on, on on, on such highly privileged users. Um, can you control if any unauthorized access is happening to your database? Can you, do you, uh, is your AVDF deployed in a way that you can block or you can control if, if someone trying to access your data? After in incident, how quickly um, you know you can find out what exactly happened to your system? Um, are you using interactive reporting of AVDF uh, to that extent, or um, how how are you how are you utilizing um, you know uh, uh, dam solution to find out? Uh, quickly that what exactly happened on your system? Are you getting alerted, notified on any suspicious or unwanted activity happening on your system? And finally, how do you support your regulatory compliance requirements? So these are, I would say, top five um, requirements or top five problem statements um, when, when it comes to visibility, monitoring, and controlling um, activities on your most critical asset. Um, that's data. Okay, so from uh, uh, AVDF Audit World Database Firewall perspective, it's, it's, it's a very powerful tool. It comes under a category of database activity monitoring. Um, it, uh, it gives you a complete view uh, with actually combination of audit collection. That's your, you, that's your sure shot evidence that something happened on your system along with the network-based SQLs. That's more like a real-time what, what, what exactly happening on your system. So combination of two uh, gives you the 360 or a complete visibility uh, and um, activity monitoring of uh, what exactly happening on your database. Uh, uh, but not only database, I would say that, on other, other sources as well, uh, like operating system audit logs, or maybe some extended sources like application tables, XML, CSV, MongoDB, et cetera, right? So multiple sources, or rather I would say anything which can provide audit um, collection, uh, we, can, uh, we can monitor that particular, um, uh, we can monitor that particular source um, now or, okay. So what are top five use cases we are, we are talking about? Um, we talked about five problems. So these use cases are more, uh, more pertaining to those, uh, those five uh, problem statement. One is that you need to have a complete uh, visibility of uh, what exactly your privileged users are doing on your database. Uh, you need to, uh, some, you, need, you need to have ability to quickly find out uh, what exactly happened on your system, like who has done what, when, where, how. Um, you should be able to block and get alerted if any unwanted or suspicious activity is happening on your system. And finally, uh, you simplify your regulatory compliance process because that process is quite cumbersome. Uh, from the audit world perspective, you can achieve all these um, top five use cases. We say that um, uh, you, when you're deploying AVDF, you need to, you should focus on these five areas and your AVDF should be deployed uh, to achieve at least these five, uh, five use cases. Uh, from the security of, uh, uh, now the question arise that uh, this particular uh, the server, audit world server, that has a lot of uh, critical information, critical audit data information of your most critical um, applications, uh, irrespective of which industry you belong to. Um, so we make sure that our repository is, is tampered proof. Uh, so we use enterprise class of Oracle database along with all those enterprise security solutions that usually you use on your enterprise applications like uh, encryption, like separation of duty, right? And 
and many uh, other features like, uh, like that on the security. AVTF also, with the flexibility, we make sure that you can integrate with third-party solutions or even Oracle solutions. So solution like uh, you might be using database security assessment tool for, um, for your Oracle databases to, to assess your security posture. So we get integrated with database security now, database security assessment tool, DBSAT, as well as Oracle Enterprise Manager, uh, ODM, that's an application data model uh, where you do sensitive data discovery um, through DBSAT or through OEM ATM. And then you can put it back to a AVDF and you can tell AVDF that these are the sensitive data and I want to do certain activity. For example, I want to monitor or I want to blog or I want to you know, get alert on those data if anything happened to that that data okay let's let's look at a very very high level one by one those top five use cases that i discussed about uh privileged user i say that they are really very important person uh on your system they have access to your most critical information but they are making sure your applications are running your system is up to date all the time um and these users with elevated privileges actually become, become a victim uh, of those attacks or hacks because they because hackers try to somehow, you know, no, somehow bypass the, or somehow use those credentials and get into system because that particular user has most of the privilege and, and you can do, if, if you are able to crack that particular user, you can have a lot of access. So monitoring of that privileged user becomes very important. Visibility of that uh, privileged users become very important. You should use AVDF to audit and monitor um, user activity, including privileged users. You can, you should use AVDF to have the entitlement uh, reports, like who has access to what kind of data on your, on your system. Uh, use AVDF um, to generate a report or to look at the report that which sensitive data being accessed by your privileged user. Because, because that combination becomes even more deadly, your sensitive data and privileged user accessing that sensitive data. Uh, you can also leverage it by, uh, you can also leverage AVDF uh, on finding, uh, uh, if, if credential sharing is happening, uh, for example, uh, uh, DBA users are, are sharing their, their users, the username, so you will have a different OS name, but same DB username. And in many scenario that can happen and you can find out, okay, there is a credential sharing um, happening on my system, or you can have uh, or use uh, AVDF for data exfiltration attempts as well. The second use case, uh, what happened after an incident? Uh, so post incident investigation, are really, I would say, cumbersome, time-consuming, resource-consuming. It takes a lot of time, and reasons are very obvious because your data is being in in a day. Your data is being accessed by hundreds and thousands of um, uh, applications and users, generating millions of audit records. So finding needle in a haystack is really a difficult task. I would say that. So you can use AVDF. Uh, AVDF provides a very rich interactive reporting tool. So uh, you can use different filters, conditions, and find out very quickly that who has done what, when, where, how on your system. So you can really uh, very quickly uh, point to exact uh, record of interest, you can reach to that, okay, so and so time, this user and this particular query. So, so very, very uh, interactive reporting tool or a very rich tool, uh, rich reporting and analytics tool that we provide and give you uh, answers of like who, what, when, where. Okay, another use case where we are talking about uh, uh, you know, attacks through SQL injection, because that's one of the common attack, I would say that on, on databases. Um, so remote access to the database actually uh, should be controlled. 
um, and having visibility and monitoring activity of your uh, database is important like we have been talking about and then what sqls what type of sql you can you should run on your system is something you can define by avdf so you can you can create a a list of allow sqls uh, and then you say that if anything runs beyond that is something uh, is, is not allowed on my system and I want to get alerted or I want to block um, certain kind of uh, SQL statements. Uh, one of the very unique capability that AVDF provides that you can put uh, its database firewall in a, in a training or a learning mode uh, by deploying in log unique uh, mode access uh, by deploying log unique policy on on database firewall and let's say you run for for a week or a two week etc two week or whatever the time frame you want to define and and then you see the pattern that what are the SQLs running on your system through different application through different application user through different channels source programs uh through privilege users etc and you figure out that okay these are type of legitimate SQLs that i want to be allowed on my system so you you uh, you create a cluster of allowed SQLs and anything beyond that, um, then you say that, okay, I want to block uh, uh, such activity or whatever is under the allowed uh, list, you say that, okay, uh, that, that particular uh, query can run on my system. A uh, lot of users, a lot of customers, they prefer getting alerted rather than blocking. Okay, so getting notified that if some unwanted illegitimate activity happening on your system from your functional requirement perspective, it's it's a key to any solution. Uh, ABDF provides a very, very rich alert policy engine to you. You can define, you can go at very fine grain level that what is specific alert, at what is specific uh, activity you want to generate that alert. So, so that there is not a you know bulk of error getting generated and nobody is taking action out of those uh, alerts. Uh, so, so you can be very specific while defining your alert policy. We give uh, flexibility to define basis on many, you know, some, some, some uh, 50 or yeah, odd column names. You can define that and you can make combination of uh, those um, columns with the, um, those uh, conditions with and or or whatever where clause predicates basically so you can have um, defined that and you can generate alert for very specific uh, purpose so that there is uh, not like hundreds of alerts are generating and you can have a appropriate action on uh, on color on, on the right alert which is uh, getting generated uh, another capability what we give that you can extend this to your your third party SIM or log analyzer. So you can push those alerts or can be pulled by SIM. Um, both kind of uh, configuration is available. So it can be pulled also and it can be pushed also. Uh, and uh, so, so a lot of customers, they prefer everything to go there, their central uh, SOC, maybe, um, you know, develop basis on your SIM or, or other log analyzer solution. So that can be sent, um, those alerts can also be sent to, uh, to, to those uh, SIM and then you can have your complete 360 degree view. And finally, um, but most important one, I would say that uh, passing your auditor uh, audit of, of, of your quarter, uh, passing your quarterly audit or half yearly or yearly audit is one of the important tasks, I would say that for, um, for our technical folks who are managing their uh, databases. Um, so having the evidence that what happened when um, having those details and as long as you can have those details, 
in the form that your auditor likes. It really makes your life easy and your auditor life easy too. So now EVTF has done a great job, I would say that over a period of time on, um, on making that process very simple for you. So there are out of the box uh, reports, obviously, for, for different standard um, regulators, like um, regulatory compliance, like PCI DSS or, uh, or EU GDPR or IRS, et cetera, or HIPAA, et cetera. Uh, however, if you want, you can make a copy of that, customize it as per your, your internal auditor requirement or your regional auditor requirement and use that because uh, in my experience, I have seen more or less every auditor requirement is, is, in, uh, is matching to, to some of the standard regulatory compliance. Uh, so, so you can utilize that. Um, uh, it becomes a very self-service kind of a tool for your auditor. They can go, they can play with certain data with, with interactive reporting, and they can really um, yeah, have data what they really want to see on your on your database that what activity happening etc uh, apart that we also provide some uh, some some key capability that um, some of our auditor really look for that uh, one of the very important one that the value change uh, reports so AVTF provides a very elegant way of provide, uh, giving that value to you. Uh, so we have audit records of before, after value. You can have that or a sensitive data access. So for example, EU GDPR asks that uh, who has access to your sensitive data. So defining exactly getting integrated with DBSAT or Oracle a OEM enterprise manager uh, application data model, and then getting the census, understanding your sensitive data, and then providing report basis on that is uh, what you can utilize AVDF for. Okay, so that was more uh, more a high level. What top five use cases you should uh, use AVDF for? Now I will uh, focus more on twenty point seven. That's our most recent release update. And uh, like I mentioned, that twenty point seven was very feature packed um, release update. Uh, these quarterly release update. Uh, uh, have few things in it. I just want to highlight here, and it's very important to apply them um, regularly. The moment they come uh, is is as important as uh, as uh, Rich mentioned that you apply uh, the database. Uh, DPR use uh, quarterly. So the moment database uh, quarterly uh, patch comes in, uh, AVDF team picks that, and AVDF uh, team picks all uh, Linux, uh, uh, you know, identified CV bugs, everything. So in in AVDF RU, we fix all the bugs were uh, identified by customer or internally uh, in that three month in that you know time frame, and then we fix uh, whatever the security uh, security related. Um, uh, you know, fixes are there, uh, the, which are coming from, uh, for the embedded database that's uh, AVDF uses, Oracle database or a Linux operating system that AVDF uses. So so all, all that get fixed in that particular DBRU, in that particular, sorry, AVDF release update, along with we introduce new features if there is an enhancement request by customer or enhancement, or we feel that there is something, um, we should do from the feature perspective to make our customer life much simpler, much easier, or or something which is a, which is an industry requirement, and we feel that a solution should have. So we do uh, we do new features also uh, in those release updates. So, but this time, so generally it, it's a balance of everything. But this time, obviously, we we did bug fixes, we did security fixes. Um, but our feature, no, we introduced very very big features, very important features actually in this particular uh, release update. Uh, there are many, but I have highlighted only the top ones, which I feel that uh, that useful for my customer and giving a tangible um, impact to to my customers. Uh, one is that um, uh, default database 
uh, firewall policy. So I'll talk about each of these uh, new feature one by one. Um, so in fact, let's uh, go and look at those uh, features one by one. So one, one of the feature that we import, uh, that we introduced in 20.7 is that ability to import and export user-defined database policies. So if you are using database firewall, component of audit world database firewall, and you have some user defined policies, not the predefined ones that you have defined certain policies in database firewall. So you, we are giving you now ability to import and export those, uh, those policies, okay? Okay, so what exactly the use case, why it is, uh, it, 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 it's a benefit to my customer. We have seen many customers that, especially in the large deployment, that they have a test environment of, of audit world. They have certain requirement. They they want to uh, they they need something that they test some use cases, some policies, and then go and deploy in the production. So rather than doing a complete uh, maybe backup and recovery or 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 a big task, they just want to try certain use cases, certain policies, and, and then up and deploy on the production system. So this is, uh, this is the way you can do it. So you on if, if new requirement comes and you say that, okay, I want to have a database firewall policy with another rule that I want to define, you can test that particular uh, policy in your test environment, uh, export it, and then uh, import it in your production system. Another use case I have um, seen that many customers, uh, they have AVDF deployed uh, uh, in, in, a, in different geography, right? Uh, the, there is the system of AVDF in their North America uh, uh, databases. There is one for uh, India, APAC, EMEA, et cetera, in different countries. Uh, but maybe their policies and um, rules under those policies are somewhat common. So, and, and they want to take that particular policy from one region and deploy it to the another region. Uh, so this import export capability actually gives you that flexibility and it, it saves a lot of time um, that deploying on the different same policies, deploying on the different, uh, uh, different audit vault server. Uh, another thing what we have done is that we made sure that uh, when you are exporting policies protected by password, and when you are importing your fine, you're passing same password. And so that uh, when you export it, and the JSON file is created, uh, there is no change in the in the policy condition, okay? Somebody can go open change and then <laughs> you import that. So it doesn't allow that it, it throws error, it has to be the same copy. Uh, so all that checks, checks and balances are there. Uh, so another uh, very important feature that we introduce is uh, default database firewall policy. Um, default database firewall policy, I, I really, <laughs> I would say that that's, uh, that's really amazing feature that uh, we thought of and we implemented thankfully. Um, so there are predefined policies in, uh, in AVDF, right? Like log all, log unique, and um, log sample. I mean, there, there are some of them. Uh, so by default, when you're deploying database firewall, we used to pass everything, okay? And then you go and uh, uh, implement um, your uh, policy there, saying that log unique or whatever with the predefined, for example, or maybe custom. But usually when you, um, I have seen customer when they deploy database firewall, they start with predefined and then gradually move it to the user defined policies. So, in default one, what we have done is that we give, so, uh, so the moment you deploy database firewall, by default, database firewall is start monitoring certain important activity. One is that we, um, we start monitoring is login logout rules. And the second one, what we start monitoring is, is basically sensitive activity. And we say that sensitive activity is, is more like, uh, 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 more like, uh, you know, uh, uh, DDL, like a data structure changes, somebody is doing alter table or drop user, et cetera, right? Uh, so uh, your DDL and DCL, 
So those are, I would say, that sensitive activity on the system. And we, by default, we start logging, the, uh, logging those information. And if anything, and in the default rule, if anything is, uh, is beyond this particular activity, uh, we pass that information and we do not log, okay? So that's the, that's the default database firewall policy that we something we introduce. Uh, another feature, and I would say that uh, our, a lot of customers were asking for that feature, is that uh, policing of the police. That okay, audit world does um, uh, audit auditing and activity monitoring for all the databases. But uh, let's say my all critical information is there in the audit world server. Um, who is monitoring audit world server? So we have introduced the concept of a shadow audit world server. Um, you can have another audit world server instance. So for example, you have your databases and sorry for my drawing, it's not really good. Uh, and you have agent deployed and agent is sending all the audit uh, records here on the collection. Similarly, uh, this audit world server database becomes another target for shadow audit world server and you can deploy agent here and then it can send audit logs to the, uh, to the audit world server. So we have enabled um, unified audit trail for, uh, for embedded database, that Oracle database, and we have enabled um, uh, OS auditing, Linux auditing uh, for, uh, for, uh, for embedded operating system. Um, so Viral Patel, I think you're raising hand again and again. If you have any question, uh, since it's a webinar, uh, you're on mute, so you can send that on your chat and uh, or on q &A. Okay. 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 Uh, so that's the use case uh, of uh, ability to watch the watcher uh, so that um, uh, you have that uh, uh, you have a visibility that what exactly happening on your audit world server and uh, keeping track of uh, critical activity on audit world server uh, and the audit data warehouse. Okay, another feature that we introduce, uh, we have a lot of customers started demanding that they want to monitor standby database of Oracle, whether it is deployed um, uh, through data guard or active data guard. And now since our most of the customers are you as are started using unified audit trail, not that they are not on the traditional auditing. So uh, that activity becomes little, little complex because uh, if you say, uh, in, in normal scenario, you you could monitor all the system, but it's just that it's a, it's a duplicate of audit record coming in uh, in audit vault. Uh, you take it from primary and you take it from multiple standby systems. Um, you monitor multiple standby system and duplicate record get generated um, in audit vault from the audit perspective. Uh, so we we fixed that. We we started enabling. Um, so, so so quite a work done on the database as well on Oracle database as well. So when you are uh, registering uh, your ADG. Uh, targets, you just need to click that, okay, this particular target is active data guard. And then you provide details for all your standby systems, as well as your, your primary system. So your audit trail looks like something like this for audit trail, but we make sure that there is no duplication of uh, audit record. And as well as you are able to audit um, standby databases on the secondary side or your disaster recovery side um, without making them into the, in, into the read write mode. So you have deployed your standby in read only mode using ADG or data guard. And uh, we started monitoring, uh, we give capability now to monitor that system without uh, generating any audit uh, duplication. Okay, the final one is that um, uh, monitoring Oracle database uh, TLS encrypted traffic. That's that's uh, important one. I would say that uh, usually in typical way, if you have uh, implemented uh, 
TLS capability in Oracle database that uh, comes as a, as, a, as a native feature in all the editions of Oracle database. So usually you have a client and you have a database and uh, traffic is encrypted in between. Uh, and basically you share the certificate between these two sources. So client have visibility of database certificate, database server certificate and database server has a visibility of client or application um, certificate. Okay, so monitoring, uh, so monitoring that traffic uh, was not possible. Uh, through ABDF because we have to look at it in between. So we have uh, we have uh, developed a feature uh, or or a support for that. So yeah, database firewall uh, works as a as a proxy for your TLS encryption. So now when you have clients sending encrypted TLS encrypted traffic to the database system, database firewall in between becomes a proxy um, to it. It decrypt, it, uh, it intercept network packets, send it to the audit vault server and encrypt back again and send it to the database uh, server. Um, you can, so now there is another, you know, uh, the uh, another source in between. Uh, so it has its own certificate. So what you're supposed to do is that you share database firewall certificate with client as well as uh, with database server. And also you share database firewall, so uh, database server certificate and the client certificate with the database firewall. So you end up having a three certificate on all three. Um, sources. Uh, from the UI perspective, um, you can register your TLS uh, target. Uh, when you are registering the target, you go to that once and you say that, okay, my target is uh, uh, TLS um, encrypted. So it's like enable TLS support and you, you select inbound TLS and outbound TLS, what level of in encryption uh, you would like to implement it. I mean, whatever the the one you are using by default, I think uh, you should uh, select that by default here and um, and you start monitoring your your TLS encrypted traffic. There are uh, steps like you uh, enable TLS support while defining your monitoring point, then you self sign identities uh, used for inbound and outbound. Uh, you share with the uh, with database firewall and then the database firewall one, which is created um, identity you share with the uh, with client and server, the same thing exactly what I have explained to you in previous slide. Okay, so call to action. Uh, uh, that's uh, call to action is that one is the summarizing of um, of all what we talk about. Um, like I mentioned that a complete 360 degree coverage with network monitoring and uh, activity auditing and uh, along with near zero false positive because we more rely on SQL grammar rather than uh, regular expressions, um, supporting all, not only Oracle, but non-Oracle databases like SQL um, Server or Sybase or DB2, Postgres, et cetera, uh, or extending it to anything which actually provides audit trail and with the rich reporting analytics tool, et cetera and having it either you want to deploy on on-premise or you want to deploy on, on cloud, with all these um, key enterprise level of functionality, you can achieve differentiated security with the AVDF. Uh, next step, I would say that um, if you are on AVDF 12.2, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, out of support more than two years now, uh, you should definitely upgrade it to to the latest one that's the AVDF 20 and the RU7. Uh, it actually, because if you see um, it's using databases and um, so, so you have all those uh, security risk as well as you are, you are lacking on all the great features, all, all the great experience we have given with AVDF 20. So if you are on 12.2, you should immediately up grade it to AVDF 20. If you're already on AVDF 20 and, um, but on the, on any old release update, like whatever, two, three, four, five, six, 
So you should you can download from Oracle support this patch. That's the latest patch for RU7. And you should apply that patch on your AVS. Okay. It's it's like as good as applying patch on your existing system. And finally, uh, for users uh, or customers who doesn't, uh, who, I mean, let's say from 12.2 to AVDF 20, before you go to AVDF 20, you want to experience it, that how does it look? Or if at all you don't, haven't you haven't used AVDF at all and you want to experience it, then um, we provide something like, uh, like a real, um, demo setup for you and uh, you can go and configure everything by yourself you can feel you can play with the tool um, we call it live labs okay it's, it's it's a live labs guided workshop rich will give you more detail on that so avdf uh, live lab is also available and uh, so so you can use live lab uh, to experience the tool or experience the solution okay rich yeah no, that was great. While you were doing that, I was pasting all of those links into the chat. Okay. And so you should see that we've got the uh, the links to the uh, documentation. We've got the links to that live lab that Nadia was talking about. Uh, OCI in the marketplace, uh, AVDF in the OCI marketplace, I should say. And then our YouTube channel as well. And then that patch number as well so you can pick all that up out of the chat here and uh, as well as the link to the recordings that we're going to have available or we have available and we're going to have this recording available too so all right thanks for joining us uh next month's topic is going to be kind of a back to basics where russ is going to talk about oracle database security profiles and some things that you can do with that that we just kind of overlook we've it's been there for a long time we've got some new features new capabilities, but things that we may not think about. So that'll be um, Wednesday, June 8th is when Russell give that presentation.